Uh, the next person is going to come up and talk about patient care. Suzanne is uh, the caregiver uh, and has been the caregiver for Andy since his transplant uh, almost nine years ago. So please welcome Suzanne to talk to you about being a caregiver. morning. Um, yes, as Bob has said, uh, my husband was diagnosed with uh, IPF in 2012. So I have been on this journey for a very long time. It's a journey that I am still currently on, um, even though he was one of the very fortunate people to receive a transplant in 2015. Um, transplant uh, even though he's had his transplant, there is still a lot of care and attention that needs to be provided post-surgery. Um, there are a lot of avenues that you can take through this. Um, in my experience, the more involved you are with the care of the person that you are currently looking after is the most valuable in order for you to fully understand what they're currently going through or even assist the doctors for example to further explain what they're going through right um, the more you can be involved the more you know about the disease or whichever disease you're dealing with, because there are several of them, right? Scleroderma for one was, was um, announced. When I started in 2012, there wasn't a whole lot of information out there. Now there is a wealth of information that everyone can access, um, especially in environments like this, for example. Um, or you can, uh, find help either through your physicians or um, there are stuff online, although I would suggest that you confirm what you learn online because it's not always uh, the most accurate information. But there are several different journeys you go on. You, you go through the original denial and anger And then, and then you basically say, this is it. So then you end up learning about the disease, being with your partner, working through all the different avenues. When oxygen is, is a discussion, then you learn about oxygen. Um, I must admit, I was extremely terrified about oxygen. I didn't know it, didn't understand it. And it the whole process just terrified me. So I learned everything I could about oxygen. And I, once I figured out the oxygen side, I took over all his, all his inquiries for oxygen. So, our extended health providers and the province, they dealt with me, not with my husband. It was just, I just took that one worry away from him. It's one less thing he has to think about. I took it over. I'm fortunate um, at the time I was able to spend a lot of time and effort in going to all the appointments and so on. I know not everybody can, but it is nice if you can't make all those appointments with all the doctors side by side that you have a conjoined conversation at the end of it so that everyone knows exactly what the process is and where you're going and um, trying not to stay in the dark is probably the best slush, uh, solution. Also, I would like to also stipulate that you cannot do this alone.
There are several support groups out there. Um, family and friends are very good, although family and friends don't always understand and they can't necessarily, sometimes you, you can go to them, but they don't necessarily understand what you're experiencing and what you're feeling. Um, there are a lot of good organizations out there that have been in the very same position. So they do understand. Whether you deal with either an organization um, such as the support group at St. Paul's, which was one of my saving graces. Um, there's, you may, uh, there are several different ones in your local and in, in your local um, communities, but friends, family, perhaps your parish, um, or or church or whatever um, faith you belong to, um, that is also another avenue. Should you choose that route, uh, but whatever route you choose. Whatever route you choose, know that there are always, always somebody out there to help you. One thing I learned later on, mind you, it, my husband had already had his transplant and we were moving on. One thing I never thought about was palliative care, which is interesting. Everyone thinks that palliative care is at the very end of everything but it doesn't have to be they they will come in and assist um further on in in the in the disease but they are there as an avenue they are there as a resource um a lot of people figure that palliative care and i must admit i was one of them that you you go to palliative care and and that's it that's the end but it doesn't always have they they can help with the journey and whatever you do as far as care providers go make sure you take time for yourself it's immensely easy to get wrapped up go for coffee every now and then anyway I have been very fortunate my husband did get a transplant and he is very well sitting there smiling at me so I know I am one of the very very fortunate won a lottery And although the care is still there, it is worth the journey. Mm -hmm. 